Spring Summer 20, the House of David Kale. It is joyous. It's a yes. celebration. So, um, Spring Summer 2020. Um, it is a. It is. It's got a. It's got two parts of it. Uh, it's a heavy collection, but it's got a celebratory aspect of it, and I believe it's a. It's a full circle where we all started in 2003 when we won the El New Talent and uh, this is where history was made. And um, 18 years later, we've laid my mom to rest um, when she was the first one to walk on the runway. I've never seen any mother literally running onto the runway to give her son a hug after the show. And uh, now it's going full circle to say this is where it began, when I made my mark in the industry. And um, it's just so befitting to get back to it uh, at the Central Convention Center to say this is where the dream actually began. Um, nothing began, but this is where the dream actually took off. And um, celebrating her in, in a manner that she knows best. Um, and knowing the brand best, um, showcasing only the best that we do as a brand in Italy. And uh, open about that is just making sure that we we get to the point of having to pay homage to things that made and defined who we are as a brand in Italy. And um, we're going to see a lot of drama as my relationship with my mother was, um, as well. Um, a bit of a fantasy coming through and also a bit of flamboyance coming through because that's what my mom was about and um, colorfulness and, and aesthetics that define who we are as the brand of Clary. Many things that my mom or our mom as a family has, has taught us was to know God that everything that we do and everything that we are evolves around and within God and God makes possible everything possible in our in our being, in our talent, in our creativity. That's one of the things that we actually gonna be celebrating as well. And to say it doesn't matter how hard the times are in in our journey and in our path, um, things are gonna work out. One favorite line that she used to say is to say, who's a little and many things are going to be okay. It's not going to be forever rain. It's not going to be forever stormy. But there's going to come spring. There's going to come summer, and we're going to be happy again. And um, this tribute to my mom Joyce is it's very close to home. It comes from within. Um, references that we've used um, along the collection is our heritage as South Africans. Um, a very strong sense of Shibelan coming through, how we've treated fabrics, printed fabrics, redefined the future of Shibelan. I hope the, the Zonga culture catches up a bit of a wave from it, how we can just like and, uh, adore ourselves as, as, as Africans. So the journey is going to be beautiful. So let's start with um, an excitement tribute and also getting into our heritage, um, a, a surprise collection that will come out. And also, um, we'll take people on, on a bit of color and we'll definitely end the show with nothing else but black, um, which is, for me, is my happiest color under the sun. Yeah, and um, how would you, how, how, how are you going to interpret your dramatic moments with your mom into a clothing moment, a yeah. fashion moment? I think um, it's going to be evident when you see the garments walking on the runway because uh, some elements and the textures that we've created, they've got movement. You see, one dress that we made takes about 28 meters of fabrication. Uh, but it's all about treatment, the textures, how the skirts were move actually. Actually, some of these dresses, like one of my clients has shown to them, they're like, actually, this thing is alive. So those are things that we are bringing through, and also how we've treated these, these prints that 
you don't only see a, a foot on print, but you see multiple layers of color and also texture coming through. So the dramatic moment comes through very strongly that handcrafting in terms of we used um, raffia and which we colored into black and with some beadwork and embellished like a beautiful sheer uh, cinema sketch coming through very strongly. But that can lead to a red carpet moment. That can lead to a cocktail party. Um, a lot of uh, pleating that came through in some of the elements where we pleated um, uh, a uh, taffeta and like we literally cut into strips and created um, our own texture in terms of a skirt and a beautiful like relaxed um, lace blouse coming through. So it's, um, it's a fusion of different elements and uh, there's a lot of structure, there's a lot of deconstruction, uh, which I think it becomes so evident in, in my life or in our, or our lives with my family and my mom and that has defined and shaped who we are today. It's not all the smooth um, textures that we used. There's drama, there's texture, there's roughness, that's why we brought in raffia because it's uncomfortable but when you look at it, it's beautiful. Yeah, and I find it interesting that there's going to be a celebration um, using one of the South African culture, um, one of a dress that is can tied to the to the Tonga, the Shibenda, yes. the Shibelani. Yeah. But also when you also look at some of the pieces, um, it reminds you of underwater life. Some, some pieces look like um, fish, you know, like a jellyfish or whatever, beautiful fish that are colorful, that are more dramatic, mm -hmm. that just keep you in a trance. And also there's also that thing that water re represents life. Yes. So I think what we're, we're the departure point for, first of all, developing the, the print for this season, we looked at, this is, was before my mom's passing, we looked at the underwater life, we looked at the jellyfish coming through, um, and many other types of fish that are just like quite interesting and very intriguing. And come the time my mom passed on, it was just like the universe and, and you know, like God is just like obviously just whispering these things um, in my head, but I was not paying attention to it. And when that happened, it was just like, oh wow, this is what actually was actually happening in my in my spirit and in my soul without paying attention to. And then refusing Shibelani, refusing the life underwater, the life above water, and the afterlife, or after after death life, whereby we believe that uh, our mom is here with us on a daily basis. She's here, we may not touch her or feel her, but you know the 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 energy, the spirit is here, it's living within us. And I believe this collection is going to resonate very strongly with that. And I hope people do get it. And I hope be, people do grasp it. And um, in terms of color, we played around with like, in terms of our print, we played around with like very aquarish, very toned down, like very calming colors. But then there's like elements of surprise, like shot of orange and yellow, where we just like, fused in our our diversity as a country from more whatever that actually are selling meals on the side of the road, buying the meals on the side, um, we have elements of walk up coming through, we have elements of uh, of joy in the city, uh, so we're to towers. It's just like bringing everything under one melting pot in this, in this evening. And then we move on to like the Shibela and whereby we're celebrating the Zonga culture. And this is the part where we say we have to unite South Africans. We have to unite Africans. It doesn't matter where you come from. The main thing for us is to say, how do we transcend our, our heritage and our traditions uh, to become globally fashionable and making them to become so trendy? And I, I'm quite excited um, on, on one of the pieces that we are doing that it's going to be so it's going to be a moment yeah. in the show. I can already see it, and uh, and uh, and also the journey that we're taking people on. It's just like a journey of like um, many years never to be forgotten. Yeah, um, you are one of the few who have come from a competition model within the design framework. Yes, who had really taken out there and built a business out of it. Out of it. What would you say it's um, the one thing that really 
pushed you hard and ran with the opportunity? I think, uh, you know, for us to, to be where we are and where we're going as a brand is, we, where we are is to, and where, how we've always started, we always believed in seize the moment. Never let a moment just go pass by. And never try never to say too many no's along the journey. And uh, work hard and work at it until you excel in it. Um, competitions, they are just a platform to make you shine, but they don't make you to become a, a brand. You have to work on it. You have to slave. You have to go through hard times. You have to fall, you have to rise, and you have to keep building. So our vision is to build a global brand that is made in South Africa. Is to build also a high-end brand. Um, is it luxury? Yes, luxury that is made in South Africa by South Africans and Africans that we work with in our space. And um, if I, I know this for sure, and this is according to my principles and my upbringing, which is I believe in the Bible, what it says. If you have a vision, write it down so that everybody that passes by sees it. If you don't have a vision that's written down, it's very easy to become phased out. It's very, it's very easy to forget where you're going. It's very easy to forget where you've started. But if you have a vision that is written clearly to say, this is where I'm going, this is who I want to be, this is what I want to become, it becomes possible. And also, with one of the scriptures that I always talk about, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, it keeps me going on a daily basis. Doesn't matter how, how much hardship we go through, doesn't matter how much success we actually achieve in the business, we are only as good as our previous collection. We are only as excellent as according to the last client that we made happy. And the very, very important thing is, is, as a brand is we have to try to keep uh, competing with ourselves, not with anyone else, to say how do we become better? How do we improve on our textiles? How do we improve with our techniques? How do we improve with our signature? Um, people do know us as a brand that is dramatic and everything else, but how do you like, we've seen the drama of the, over the years. Has it grown? Has it evolved? Does it become better? Because, sorry. Because there's nothing as worse as seeing a stagnant brand without growth. That's what leads to disappearing of many other brands. So what we focus on as a brand is to say, here's our vision. This is where we're going. How are we achieving that? Um, people ask this, but how do you afford to have so many people working with you in the, in the business? It's all about making sure that you open doors for, for clients. You open doors for opportunities that come. Collaborate with multiple brands. I mean, you've seen along the journey how we've come from the likes of Luella, Legit, uh, Volvo, Mercedes Benz, uh, Corvossier, you name it. This year we've um, collaborated with Testic, we just collaborated with Crooked and Jones, and we just keep saying, what's new? What is it that we can do to, um, to actually improve the status of the brand? And we try not to even compete with many other designers because we have to stay in our lane. And our lane is cut for David Clyde. What, does, what defines David Clyde? What makes David Clyde to be who we are? Um, when people think David Lally, what is it that comes first or pops in their mind? Those are things that we are working on on a daily basis. Oh, red carpet moments, think David Lally. Uh, an expensive wedding dress, think David Lally. An expensive magic dance, you think David Lally. And many other things. And also a brand that has grown over the years, showcased at New York Fashion Week, Paris Fashion Week, and also conquering the, the continent. Uh, we do amazing work in Nigeria, in Uganda, in, um, in, in, in Ventook. We're doing so, many, so much work. And the main thing is how do all these aspects of showcasing, building, collaborating, building friendships within the industry, building industry currency. Uh, there's a friend of mine that taught me about uh, industry currency. Building that, because you can't just wake up that I'm going to use uh, an industry currency. You have to work on it. And this, industry, this currency um, is built based on what? Relationships, partnerships, and also uh, being friendly with many other people around you, within your country, within the continent, and also globally.
Yeah, so you would say relationships and、um, just social currency makes you a bankable brand because these blue chip、um, companies or or entities wouldn't come to the house of David Kelly for a partnership、mm-hmm. if you weren't doing something amazing already or they believe in you. I, I suppose it takes confidence.、Um, and the other thing, you spoke of vision. I would like to find out from you when were you able to differentiate your vision as a designer and a vision for your house and for your business. With did you start knowing being able to differentiate? <laughs> <laughs> Because you are the man and the man is the business. Yes. At what point were you able to differentiate the two? Okay, so we just gotta go back a little bit about、yeah. the relationships and、uh, that you build. They make you and they define you. And for anyone to come and say, I want you to make my wedding dress, they trust you already.、Uh, I want you to carry testing, they trust you already because they look at the values, they look at the work ethic, they look at so many aspects, and thus people are able to trust you with what with their brands. And and then we also as a brand, it's the, it's not one way, it's two ways.、Um, it's aligned with our vision, with our strategy of growth. Who are we going to tap into? Who are we going to talk to? With this collaboration, so it's very, very important that the fundamentals of these relationships are, are, are in place. And now, in terms of vision and the signature, David Clavell, I don't know which one came first. I'm not sure if it's the chicken or the egg or the eggs, the chicken. You know, so but it just happened on me. I can tell you one thing that after graduating and also leaving、uh, lecturing days from Valley University, I decided I wanted to be a designer. I want to now full time do this on a full time basis. I didn't know that I want to become a businessman. I knew that I wanted to, to to make clothes. I want. I knew that I wanted to do something big. But becoming a businessman fell on my lap. I had to learn. Yes, I had a bit of background from high school and early days of university where I was studying auditing, and those things came in handy as we as we journeyed along. And、um, and also as you become a businessman, you realize that it's not always a glory hallelujah boulevard. You fail, you disappoint people, you you make people cry, you get into debt, you have to get out of debt, you have to make sure that you pay your bills on time, and all these things they build character in you. The good times and the bad times and the struggling times they build a six pack, a business six pack in you. Not everybody. Is cut for becoming a businessman and also, I would say, a trailblazing designer.、Um, very few people are able to do so, and I'm not saying I am, but the journey is、um, is actually the journey is proving that along the years of study, education, being a lecturer, and being eight years full time in the business, it has built what character. It has built stamina to say we do have a stay, stay in power, and it's not because we are clever or anything else. It's God's grace, and we are able to stand up every morning and say we have a business. Is it easy? No. It's tough. Absolutely. On a daily basis. Basis.、Um, do I love what I do every day?、Uh, will I ever change this job? Never.、Um, will I do more to make sure that I improve in my brand? Absolutely. Yeah, and David, what would you think informs your intellect and your humility in terms of、um, giving back? You speak of this journey that you've shown in、um, intercontinental. Basically,、mm-hmm. you still manage. You you started a platform with the David, the intern.、Mm-hmm. Um, you just show now and at in Phosphorus,、yes. and you're using some of those models for for your current show.、Yes. You have built some of really great. Young designers who have now branched out and now they're showing on their own independently.、Yeah. Um, how would you say you found the humility to still do what you do, but in a way also give back? That now you have tangible things. Actually, case studies can be written to say, "I have produced this."、Um, I I I I I always always say to people, it it all starts away from home. My mom has always taught me to be humble. It doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter whatever you achieve. We we start from humble beginnings. My mom was a domestic worker. I was raised in a four-roomed house, not four bedrooms, four rooms. It was two bedrooms, a lounge, and a kitchen. That's how it started. And today we have become a home.、Um, 
my sisters are all married, my brother is working, I have built this brand. The one thing my mom has told me that never allow your success to get into your head, but always remember where you started. Never ever also look down on small beginnings. Always remember those things and appreciate them. Secondly, respect goes a long way. That's what my mom told me and all of us to say um, the adults are adults. It doesn't matter how powerful, how wealthy you can be. An adult person is an adult person. Those principles and fundamentals, they define and make us who we are. Um, above everything else, we, when we started this conversation, I said, my mom taught us God. My, my roots and beliefs in God define who I am. And the word of God plays a major role in me and in my journey. And um, my bishop, uh, Bishop Musa Sono, taught one day about leadership. He says, you can never become a successful leader unless you have people that you have mentored and they've gone through your hands. It doesn't matter how big your church can be, it doesn't matter if you have 5,000 people following you, but if you don't have anyone that is leading on your footsteps, forget it. So I had to learn from that to say, for us to become successful, we need to impact the skill. Why did it start? It's because when I started, when I started the intern, um, I looked back on my journey. Nobody was willing to mentor us. When I started the intern by David Flynn, not many designers were open to mentorship programs or even leadership programs. Um, but one person that was willing to open doors for me was Julian from the Boys in the early 90s. And I learned a lot from that. And I made a lot of mistakes. I disappointed a lot of people along the journey. But nobody was like, David, let's guide you, do this, do that, do that. And with our little experience from, I think we started the intern in 2012, when we started in KZN, I was like, I've been in the industry for like now almost eight years. I know I've got a bit of experience. I can share it with these designers. Fast forward 18 years later, we have mentored over 40 something designers. And obviously not all of them will become superstar designers, but most of them, they are doing something in their own right. Um, we look at the likes of Ndando XV, we look at the likes of Muso Mexo. Um, and these people I'm talking about, they have won competitions, they are trailblazing. We look at the, the likes of Cindy Mfade, we look at the likes of Sipo Sinche Masago, who's been to Project Runway. This weekend he's debuting his own collection without mentorship, without anything. Kevin Zomura, who was the last winner for the intern by David Clark, also launching his brand by himself and flourishing. Those things for me, it's perks to say we have done something as a, as, as a house of David Clark. We don't only mentor fashion designers, we're mentoring PR. All the people that are working in PR right now, they started out as interns. We have another intern, which is Zanelli right now. We have another intern, um, Verushka. She's a graphic design intern. The other one is Dana. She finished her internship last year. She moved to Cape Town. But because now we have Fashion Week coming up and she knows the pressure and the amount of work that actually happens within the house. Monday, I saw her walking in. She's like, good morning, everybody. I'm here to help you for Fashion Week. I'm like, I didn't ask for this help. And for me, it's, a, it's, it's gratification to say we are doing something right when you get people just like offering their services and their help because they understand the pressure, they understand the hard work that goes within the house of David Klein. And also them appreciating what we have helped them with. For me, it's so fulfilling. And uh, we are going to see the intern season two coming through in South Africa. Bigger picture is to have the intern Africa um, taking on and changing the game and changing the narrative and seeing much more talent coming out of this continent. And um, why we're we doing this is because we are building a legacy of David Lally, the brand. We want uh, my children, my children's children, and generations to come to still remember the house of David Lally, like people remember the house of Chanel, Christian Dior, but with being a game changer beyond just being a fashion house. Most people don't really understand the difficulties and the challenge that is producing Sure. 
Um, can you please speak on a little bit about that in terms of the challenge, what it takes, the late nights, the sure. drama? <laughs> uh, people don't understand the, the challenges and the, the complexities of putting together a show. Thank God that we, we've allowed and uh, uh, exposed ourselves to these things. First of all, showcasing off-site has its own drama, getting licensing, getting job, getting uh, everybody buying into your vision. That's its own drama. Let alone the collection, let alone having say, let's look at the Nelson Mandela Bridge in 2011 when we had 92 models. Where do you get 92 models when AFI gives you uh, 50 models? You have all these people to fill up. And then, not only that, then you have to pay them. Then you have to make sure that you're an amazing show producer. You have to get the music. You gotta get the head makeup sponsor buying your madness of hundreds of these people that are coming to work for you. And then logistics of city plan is the worst thing I understand. Who are you sitting where? Who is not talking to who? And everything else. All of those things, they, they all have to come from you. And I know this for sure that showcasing offsite has built a lot of character in us as a brand. Um, let alone that when we showcase in New York, you get to New York, you don't have the setup, the established setup that we have in South Africa or in Africa. You get to New York, you pay for showcasing. You have to hire a show producer, you have to hire a casting director who is going to talk to all these agencies around New York and then the fitting and casting happens very differently. You don't get there, you've got 15 models, no, no, no. You have a model at a time according to their schedule when they are available. And then when you are done, you think you're done, the day of the show at 8 o'clock in the morning, no, you just cancelled this model, got in a job with Tommy and Figure. Now you have another stress to like, you need to scrape for another model. You have to find a photographer. You have to find a videographer. You have to then still find yourself a sponsor for hair and makeup. Basically, you get to New York, you have nothing. You have to start from scratch. You have to have a value for fitting and you pay for those things. So here back home, we have it very easy. Um, I'm not looking down upon organizations like AFI that has given us platforms. They're doing great. But we need to stop throwing ourselves a pity party as designers and thinking it's all going to be easy. It's hard work. It's really, really hard work. And also, beyond anything else, the question is, when it's all said and done, you've showcased, you've told your narrative, are people going to remember that narrative? Because it's okay to do a show, but a ready to do a show does not get you PR or even write-ups. How do you want people to remember you? How, what, is it, what, if, what is this feeling that you are wanting people to be left with along the journey? So my take is, as we journey along as, as a creative industry, we must understand, and also as designers, we must understand that we work in the showbiz business. We are, we are entertainers. People come there to see, like, let's see what David has to offer. Let's see what Latuna has to offer. Let's see what uh, Tula Cindy has to offer. Um, so that we get excited. We inspire people, we influence people to want to become influencers. Yeah. Hashtag, we don't want to talk about that today. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> um, we inspire people, we, we, we excite people. People look, at, look forward to the art, the craftsmanship, and also the drama that comes with the brand. Yeah. Um, the biggest takeaway from your journey, um, as you sit there, what do you know now that you didn't know then that you wish somebody told you? What I know now, I know a lot of things, Jerry. I know a lot of things. Share the um, wise one. <laughs> the first one is you're never good enough and you don't know it all. And don't think you've got this because this is life. And life does happen to the best of us. And um, humility is key. I know this for sure. The drama that you see on TV of designers screaming and yelling backstage and doing it doesn't pay bills, it doesn't even take it next to the next level. Um, humility helps you to build relationships with people. Like we spoke about it earlier, you build industry currency by being, being humble, um, being respectful to people, and treating people with, um, with decency, and understanding that this person that is coming here to cast, it's their dream, it's their vision, They've spared, they've borrowed, they've begged, they've stolen money to come for the casting. And how do we treat them badly 
just because we don't have what it takes at this moment. Next season, they may have what it takes because as designers, our beauty varies every day. What's amazing today was like, ah, tomorrow's no. And the person that is coming for custom for five years to you, all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, where have you been? Just like fabric when you buy it. Today's like, oh, this is horrible. Tomorrow when you come, like, oh my God, where does this fabric come from? So those things, they build character in you. And also, um, and understand that um, your journey is not in your hands, but it's in the hands of God. And as much as people try to separate God and the creative industry, you can never do that. Because our ability and talent comes from God. Our, our creativity comes from God. And we need to learn this simple principle of how creative God can be. When God could create everything out of nothing. The sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the fish that we are actually using as inspiration today. Um, the cultures, our, 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 our how, what is it, how do we say it? Our language, diversity, it all comes from God. It, everything that we do, our creativity, how we put ourselves together. It's, it, people say like, no, I made myself to be like this. No, 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 it comes from somewhere. Your holy was already been done by the Almighty. So knowing that God is the ruler and orchestrator of everything is key. And if I didn't have God in my life or in this brand, I don't know where we would be. I don't know how far we would have gone. I don't know if we would still be running today. Because I look back at the tough times that we've gone through as a brand. Nothing sustained us by the grace of God. There were times whereby, don't ask me how many times, mm. but there were times whereby I've said to myself, I want to shut down and just move on and go find a job. But because there was something in me, that action within me, that says it's going to be okay. My mom, when she was still alive, she would call and she would be like, who's all you want She meant that. And the grace of God sustained us. So what I'm saying is, I don't think we would be where we are today if God was not on top of it. Yeah, um, cultural radar. So what do you think is moving the needle right now in terms of our culture? What's moving the needle right now is uh, individualism and um, how we are bringing all different African cultures and traditions and behaviors under one pot, and when they get into our closet, we personalize them. And um, in our creative spaces, as we build connections we look at Africa in a different eye. Um, we are starting to appreciate our resources. We start to appreciate our diversity, our heritage, our history, and becoming louder about it. Um, the times are changing. Um, it's no longer about what has gone through custom. It's right. It's not about what is made in Africa. It's actually right. And um, seeing all these beautiful snippets, the world is trying to pay attention to. I'm saying it's a bit too late for you to pay attention. We've got a lot of catching up to do. We look at the likes of Terry Maguru winning the LVMH Prize, the likes of Richie Nissi winning um, the Essence uh, Designer of the Year. You look at us having showcased at New York, New York Fashion Week for eight seasons nonstop. You look at the likes of La Duma doing Milan, Paris, New York. It, it's been time. The world needs to pull up their socks and to make sure that they start supporting um, where their social consciousness is at. And because Africa is the next best place for fashion. Fabulous. I think we'll end it on that note. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Amazing. How gorgeous. <laughs>